Welcome to Synthesis Workshop. On today's Research Spotlight episode, I'm very happy to have with us Michele Garbo, who is a PhD student in the Mazet Group at the University of Geneva. Michele graduated from the University of Trieste, and in 2017, he started his doctoral work. Today, he's going to share with us some recently published work in the area of asymmetric catalysis with transition metals. Without further ado, let's get right to the chemistry. Thank you for joining us today, Michele. Thanks a lot, Matt, for your very kind introduction and for inviting me to contribute to your always very informative podcast. Today, it's my great pleasure to present to you some of the research that I've carried out in the Mase Group here at the University of Geneva. The project I'm going to talk about is aimed at the synthesis of optically active seven member carbocycles, and it's based on the sequential combination of two reactions the cyclopropanation of conjugated dienes and 5 plus 2 cycloaddition of vinyl cyclopropanes to alkynes. I will also show you how this synthetic approach is made possible by the peculiar stereochemical features of these two processes. Among the several methods that have been developed for the preparation of seven member cycles, the rhodium catalyzed 5 plus 2 cycloaddition really stands out for its efficiency. It was extensively developed by the group of Paul Vander, who also demonstrated its utility in the total synthesis of several molecules. In this reaction, the 5 carbon synthon is a vinyl cyclopropane, or VCP, which undergoes ring opening and then addition to a pi system, which can be either an alkyne, an aline, or an olefin, although the latter is limited to the intramolecular version of the reaction, where it is tethered to the VCP. This is the first of two big limitations of the intermolecular process, the second one being the absence of an enantioselective protocol, which instead has been reported for the intramolecular version. The second limitation is also partly a consequence of the first one, as the use of alkynes instead of alkenes can only introduce sp2 carbons in the product molecule. Therefore, if we want to introduce a chiral element, this must come from the VCP cycloaddition partner. For the synthesis of these chiral substrates, we turned our focus to the antioselective cyclopropanation of dienes. The original reaction performed on alkenes was developed by Nozaki and Noyori, and dates back to the 60s. It constitutes the first ever reported example of an antioselective homogeneous catalysis. In this reaction, a transition metal complex, typically copper 1, catalyzes the decomposition of a diazo compound to form an electrophilic metal carbonoid, which then adds to the olefin in an asynchronous concerted manner. The extension of such procedure to 1-3 conjugated dienes leads to the formation of VCPs. It has been implemented on an industrial scale for the conversion of dimethyl hexadiene to chrysanthemic esters, which constitute the core of the pyrethroid class of insecticides. However, this success has somewhat overshadowed the difficulties encountered in the cyclopropanation of different types of dienes. Two substituted 1,3 dienes, for instance, have found very scarce application in this chemistry, and the only systematic study in this regard, by Doyle, reports very low diester selectivities, and no information at all about enantioselectivity. Selectivity always represents a challenge in the development of synthetic methods, and this is even more true when it needs to be controlled over several steps. Such is certainly the case of our intended two-step approach. In branched 1-3 dienes, both the 1-2 and the 3-4 double bond can undergo cyclopropanation, thus leading to differently substituted VCPs, or even to double cyclopropanation products. In each cyclopropane ring, then, the configuration of the newly introduced group can be either cis or trans to the vinyl. The total number of isomers, of course, must also be doubled if we want to account for an antiselectivity. And this is just the first step. In the second reaction, in case we decide to use non-symmetrical kinds, the potential outcomes are doubled again as a result of the two possible register activities of the insertion step. What we wanted to achieve in order to deliver a synthetically useful methodology is the selective formation of only one isomer. The question to answer, therefore, is at which stage can we control each of the different stereochemical aspects of our combined process? Luckily for us, cyclopropanation and 5 plus 2 cycloaddition have both been studied quite deeply and so we could build on the understanding of their respective mechanism to devise a convergent strategy that takes advantage of their complementary stereochemical features. Since the seminar report by Nozaki and Noyori, a plethora of different catalysts has been designed for a cyclopropanation of alkenes. In the copper catalyzed reaction, the so-called box ligands are characterized by almost perfect enantioselectivity. When they use in combination with bulky diazoacetates, also the stereoselectivity can reach very high values. The mechanism for an anti-induction of these and other similar NN ligands, such as the semicorins, was studied by Pfalz. 
in the model he proposed, it is the steric interaction between the ester moiety of the carbonoid and the substituents on the oxazoline ring that determines the preferred enantiomeric outcome, regardless of other substituents present on the olefin. Our hypothesis was that extending this model to the case of diings, the cis and trans BCPs obtained by cellular propagation of the most substituted double bond, as depicted here, would still have the same configuration as the ester bearing carbon. The vinyl stereocenter instead would be of opposite configuration in the two molecules. The same considerations can of course be made also for cyclopropanation at the 3-4 double bond. Starting from the 1 to cis and 1 to trans diesterizomers that can be expected from the first step, we can draw different reaction pathways based on the mechanistic model developed by Renner and Hook for 5 plus 2 cycloadditions. Depending on which cyclopropane bond is cleaved, two different cycloheptadienes may be formed. If the radioactivity is the same for both diesterizomers, let's say along the red arrows for example, the reaction pathways would converge to the same product. This would be possible because the shift of the vinyl double bond is expected to cancel out the stereochemical information of the adjacent stereocenter. In this way, only the ester bearing stereocenter would remain on the final product. Furthermore, depending on the radioselectivity of the previous step, 3 4 cyclopropanation products may be present as well and potentially undergo similar reaction pathways to give different cycloheptadiene isomers. Although some investigations on the cycloaddition of substituted VCPs have been performed already, a study on antiomerically pure substrates was not reported yet, leaving a doubt on the stereospecificity of such process, especially considering the presence of a potentially labile stereocenter. Now, given these theoretical premises, we can start to have a look at the actual results. For the first step, we choose a biphenyl substituted diene as model substrate. After a brief screening, we identified the terbutyl substituted box as the ideal ligand for the task, obtaining the four VCP isomers in 61% combined yield. Quite pleasingly, we found that cyclopropanation shows good selectivity for a 1-2 double bond. This can be explained by the higher electron density of this double bond compared to the less substituted one, leading therefore to a more favorable interaction with the electrophilic carbonoid. The diester selectivity instead is very low, probably as a consequence of the relatively similar steric demand of the two substituents, as well as their more remote position from the catalyst in the transition state. After a very careful separation, we were able to obtain pure samples of all four isomers. The enantiomeric excess of the two major diester isomers, determined by chiral HPLC, resulted in over 90% in both cases. One of them, the one to trans, was derivatized to facilitate the formation of suitable crystals for X-ray analysis, and the absolute serochemistry was found to be matching with the false model provision. Moreover, apimerization of the 1 to cis VCP provided the trans isomer of opposite absolute configuration to the trans compound obtained directly from the enantioselective cyclopropanation, therefore confirming also the relative stereochemistry of the two major products. The samples of isolated VCP isomers were also used to study the second step of our procedure, in combination with dimethyl acetylene dicarboxate as the 2 pi partner. Much to our surprise, none of the catalysts classically employed in this chemistry displayed any reactivity at all, and the formation of cycloadducts was observed only with the use of rhodium bicyclooctadiene tetrafluborate. In presence of 5 mol percent of this catalyst, the 1 to 6 VCP was converted into a single cycloheptadiene isomer in 90% isolated yield and 91% antiomeric excess. X ray analysis proved the stereospecificity of the reaction, which proceeds with the retention of configuration. Starting from the trans VCP isomer instead, we observed the formation of a mixture of both ring opening ratio isomers. The ratio, 1.4 to 1, although not very high, is in favor of the same isomer obtained from the reaction of the cis VCP, and this means that we have, indeed, the stereoconvergent reaction that we wanted to achieve. The combined yield, in this case, was reduced to 62%, but both products reached 94% in antimeric excess. Also for the minor product, retention of configuration at the ester bearing carbon was observed by X-ray analysis. Another important experiment was to determine the chemoselectivity. We engaged the isolated 3-4 VCP isomers in the same reaction conditions, and we did not observe any reactivity. With these very promising results in hand, we moved on to apply our protocol to the VCP mixture without separation. In this case, the two isomers were obtained in an 8.3 to 1 ratio, and were isolated with 77% combined yield and 91% enantiomeric excess for the major product. The higher yield value reported in brackets is based only on the 1-2 VCPs, omitting the unreactive 3-4 VCPs from the calculation. 
Then, we proceeded investigating the effect of different substituents at the position 2 of the diene. To explore these substrates, we took advantage of a coupling methodology recently developed in our group that provides easy access to a broad range of two substituted 1,3 dienes. In the cyclopropanation step, the presence of electron donating substituents enhances the selectivity of the reaction towards the 1,2 double bond, while in the cycloaddition step, the radioselectivity of ring opening was instead lower compared to the model substrate. This is evident, for instance, in the case of thiophin. The opposite, instead, was observed in the presence of an electron withdrawing substituent, with a lower selectivity for 1 to cyclopropanation, but a 12.5 to 1 ratio between cycloaddition products. Switching from aromatic to aliphatic dienes, we met a significant drop in the productivity of the second step, with the phenethyl diene not even reaching 20% yield. We moved on to explore our cycloaddition with different alkyne partners. We found that having two alkyl moieties in place of the esters, despite their different electronic properties, do not hamper either reactivity nor selectivity. Even more interesting were the results obtained with non-symmetric alkynes. As we said already, the two possible orientations of the alkyne in the insertion step double the number of isomeric products. However, in the case of trimethylsyl acetylene, which we choose as our model non-symmetric alkyne, only one of the two possible orientations was observed in all cases. Moreover, ring opening radioselectivity was higher as well, even in combination with the same electron rich dienes that displayed low selectivity in the previous experiments. Also, aliphatic dienes, both primary and secondary, proved to be compatible with this reaction partner and showed similarly high radioselectivities. These unexpected results show us how the ring opening is affected not only by substitution on the VCP, but also on the cycloaddition partner, likely because of differences in its coordination to the catalyst. Excellent selectivities for both ring opening and insertion were achieved also for a disubstituted non-symmetric alkyne. The only case in which we found a lower radioselectivity for insertion was the cycloaddition of phenylacetylene, where the preference was actually reversed in favor of the product with adjacent substituents. Overall, our sequence provides practical access to optically active seven-membered carbocycles over two steps. The diastereoconvergent, chemoselective, and enantiospecific cycloaddition preserves the high enantiomeric excess achieved in the cyclopropanation, while overcoming the apparent limitation of its low diastereoselectivity. I hope you enjoyed listening to my presentation as much as I enjoyed working on this project and sharing it with you. I would like to thank again Dr. Matthew Horwitz for giving me this wonderful opportunity, my supervisor, Professor Clement Mazet, for his constant support, Céline Besnard and Laure Guenet from our X ray team and the Swiss National Science Foundation and the University of Geneva for financial support. I wish also to thank all my present and former lab mates for their suggestions and for the pleasure that it is to be with them. And thank you all for your kind attention. Thank you very much for tuning in today, and I hope you enjoyed Michele's talk on this research spotlight. To support this initiative, help us out by subscribing and follow us on Twitter to stay up to date. See you all next time.